Hey guys, it's Monday. It's the start of a new week. I'm Lawrence Presman, the president. You're watching Puck Time. Today's show, Andrew McGinnis and Alex B. Smith. We've got four games on tap. We're going to take them all apart. Uh, we got a couple of promotions for you all. Make sure to stay tuned all the way through to the end. And let's bring in the boys. Uh, hey guys, how was your weekend? Alex, you can start. No, <laughs> okay. no I want yeah, I I to hear it both at the same time. Alex, how was your weekend, bro? <laughs> mine, mine was pretty good. I uh, couldn't, couldn't complain. A lot of, like I said, you know, fun weekend. Every time we talk about January, you got, you know, NFL playoffs, uh, four super exciting games, uh, tons of excitement with college basketball. NHL had a good weekend uh, with the college hoops. <laughs> And uh, that's the play I have up tonight at Sports Memo. But uh, just a really good weekend. So, uh, uh, Andrew, how was yours? Yeah, it was good. Uh, like you guys said there, like you said there, Alex, I mean, if you don't like what happened this weekend in sports, or you don't like uh, all the games that happened, I think you're in the, in the wrong industry or you need to find a new hobby. Because, uh, you know, any sports fan was absolutely having a blast on Saturday well, and Sunday of this that's weekend. That's if they won. Uh, that's if right? they won. And yeah. we don't <laughs> care about sports fans. We care about gamblers, boys. Uh, and speaking yeah, about Saturday, I had a six and one day Saturday. Uh, won, my, won both my NHL plays, uh, won both my NFL plays. I had a 5% play on Tennessee. And, you know, my only regret about that game really was that um, I don't have New England to bet against anymore, which is a real shame because I've been riding that train for a while. Uh, and then I won my hockey game again yesterday on a nice 5-0 and hockey run. Uh, Andrew, you're rolling, dude. 12-3 and all sports run. Congratulations. Outstanding week over at sportsmemo.com. Uh, we got a promo up for you. Um, I took $30 off of your regular price uh, seven-day package over at sportsmemo.com, $119. Uh, it's yours, everybody, for 89 bucks. He's coming into this week just simply on fire. Use the promo code ANDREW89. And, uh, Andrew, you can tweet that out if you want. Um, that that uh, promo code is currently active. So, ANDREW89 over at sportsmemo.com. And, Alex, we'll have a promo for you uh, on the uh, tomorrow. You're, you're on tomorrow's show, right? Yes, I am. On yeah, the we're going to do an NHL promo for you, my friend. Uh, boys, let's get to it. Big day uh, in uh, in sports for me. I've got uh, puck time with you, and then I've got uh, the betting edge. It's uh, going to be up at our YouTube channel, Wager Talk TV, with Marco D'Angelo. We'll take apart the wild card games. And as well, Drew's got a podcast with you, Andrew, uh, where you're going to be looking at Tuesday's NHL card. You're going to be doing that every Monday with him, right? Yeah, every Monday it's going to be a look ahead spot to uh, Tuesdays, and you know it's not going to be just NHL. It'll be a look at some NFL yeah. stuff or NBA, college hoops. It's so, a great podcast. Uh, just kind of my time slot. Yeah, and guys, yeah. don't forget Joe Ranieri uh, NBA show every day, as well as a college basketball show with Ralph Michaels. So a ton going on at Wager Talk, uh, and a lot of exciting news coming your way. So stay tuned. Boys, let's get into this Edmonton-Toronto Maple Leaf game. And while the Leafs are just absolutely on fire, and it shows in the lines, and I think uh, they're overvalued right now. Minus 211 against Edmonton, a total of 6.5. And, and I look at that, uh, Alex. Uh, I look at the over here. I mean, you know, Toronto uh, put up four or more goals nine games in a row. And uh, they did play the New York Islanders. They did not put up four goals, but they did put up three and they finally gave us an outstanding uh, defensive effort. Uh, they're playing this Edmonton team, and Edmonton won a beauty against Boston 4-1. Uh, but this team can score, and this team can fly, and I think we're going to have a very fast-paced game up and down the ice. Um, I know it's 6.5, but I think we could get to 8 or 9 goals in this game. What do you like? Well, you know, like you said, Toronto finally putting up a, a really good defensive effort and against a good defensive team, mind you, shutting yeah. out the New York Islanders in that last game. It, it kind of worries me because now you're playing an Edmonton team. We talk about how, you know, uh, inconsistent their offense can be at times. They'll c turn, you know, turn in an effort to only have one or two goals. Then they'll come back and get five or six. Uh, Mike Smith is in net for the Oilers. He's been uh, pretty much looking like a guy who, you know, is playing, you know, past his prime, probably done in the league uh, a year or so. The way Toronto's rolling offensively, I would look at their team total over, but yeah. I'd probably stay away from this full game over, like I said, being at a six and a half. 
Yeah, Andrew, I, I can't take minus 211 with the Leafs. I mean, I know they're absolutely rolling right now, but that number just seems high. Uh, what do you like in this game? Yeah, I agree. The number seems, seems, seems pretty high. And Edmonton has lost seven straight games against Toronto, so they haven't really done well against them uh, at a short scale here. And we got to look at it from the, the travel factor as well. I mean, a few games now for, for Edmonton playing uh, the Rangers, Buffalo, and, and then Boston, yeah. uh, you know, closing in on this road trip here. And, you know, I'm going to go with the same strategy I've been going with. Near the end of the road trip, I expect sloppiness. I expect turnovers, um, so which I'm going to lead to an over. Uh, Edmonton should be feeling good about themselves. Saw the puck go in four times uh, against Boston, a team that's pretty good, good defensively at home for the most part. I'm not really sure what's happening with Boston right now, but they're uh, struggling to score, which is unusual for them. But, um, yeah, I think Edmonton comes in there, gets a few themselves. However, like you said, you have to look at the situation where Toronto played a great defensive game. And I was actually speaking about it on Saturday, saying that, you know, Toronto needs to get better on defense. They're playing so well offensively right now. The Islanders wanted to get back to playing, you know, their style of hockey, very defensive. But they just couldn't put the puck in themselves. So, you know, it, does Toronto build off their defensive effort or do they kind of get back to their normal selves? Uh, I think it's kind of the latter half of that, and they just, you know, pox go flying in the net tonight. So we're going to go with maybe a 5-3 prediction for Toronto, and that'll get us over the total. Yeah, I like that. I think 5-3 is uh, realistic. Um, the Habs, Andrew, uh, this team is not doing very well, and they're hosting Winnipeg tonight. Uh, Winnipeg, look, they've been on a bit of a free fall of late. They've lost five of their last six games, but... Montreal has lost five in a row. Uh, Claude Julien must be just pissed off. This is not a happy guy to begin with. Um, but it doesn't seem like he could get this team going. They played a good game against Pittsburgh. Uh, they got it into overtime. Um, but I'm looking at this line here at Winnipeg at plus 126. And I understand that Montreal is in desperate need of a win. But they were in desperate need of a win last game and the game before. Uh, I think, and I'll go to you, Andrew, first. I think Winnipeg is very live tonight. Yeah, sadly, I do too, Perez. But at the same time, like you said, um, it's a big game for the Habs. And I know that must win doesn't always mean will win. But, you know, look at their game they played against Pittsburgh. It was actually a really tight game. They forced it to overtime. Uh, they at least got a point out of it. Uh, the way they lost in overtime was pretty, pretty sad. But, you know, this is a team that's di dying for a win right now. I mean, if they're you know, hope and forget to take that pretty good eight or nine game stretch before their bye week. They need to get a few wins under their belt. And right now, we can't be saying anything good about the Winnipeg Jets either. I mean, uh, to only score two goals against Win against uh, Minnesota, um, I personally bet their team total over two and a half, and uh, that didn't get there for me. But, the, you know, their defensive woes have actually all been there as well. I mean, look at them for their 10-game skill for Winnipeg. They're giving up six. Six goals here, four goals here. Um, you know, so it wouldn't surprise you to see Montreal put a few in on them. I'm looking at under six and a half. Yeah. Sometimes you just you see a total and you, and you think you know maybe this is too good to be true. But both teams struggling to score, and you know if they can clamp down defensively even a little bit, uh, which what they're both both probably going to do to try and get the win, uh, we should come out on top. So under six and a half for me. Alex, it's funny. I was going to uh, lead into you with the under as well. I think Winnipeg super live tonight, but I think the under is a better bet. Uh, Montreal is struggling to score, and they're gonna for Montreal to win, and they need this bad. Uh, they're gonna have to play a real tight checking game. Um, I prefer the under. I, I lean on Winnipeg. Where are you at? Yeah, I agree with you guys with the under as well. Even though the last win they had came against this Jets team, where they scored six goals, but uh, we've seen them dry up offensively, only getting four goals in the last three games combined. I would actually also look at the draw here at plus three fifteen. Interesting. We saw both these teams uh, coming off of overtime uh, losses in their last respective games. Like I said, you know, we seeing these two teams needing wins, trying to play better defensively. Things might slow down. Uh, they try to limit turnovers, uh, limit mistakes in their own end. Uh, that can often lead. And now as we're getting into you know, the, the new year, this second half of the season, we tend to see a lot of games kind of slow down late and go into overtime. So I would take a shot with the draw at plus 315. He's Alex B. Smith. You can find him at sportsmemo.com. Andrew McGinnis, sportsmemo.com as well. Uh, Andrew's on a 12-3 and three all sports run. You can get seven days of all his plays, every sport, every day, all the time. $30 off the regular price, Andrew89. Guys, head over to sportsmemo.com and use that promo code, Andrew89.
nine as well. I got a promo for me, um, Prez NFL 79. Now that gets you my entire NFL playoffs until the Super Bowl, including at least 10 proposition bets, which I do really well in. Uh, I'm on a nine and two NFL run, guys. I'm on an eight and two all sports run. I'm absolutely in the zone. January has been so good to me. Um, 79, hey, sorry, Andrew. Oh, I just said, let's go. Great job. Yeah, dude, 79 bucks for the rest of my playoffs. I got a 5% play um, this weekend. That's 40 bucks alone. Uh, so $79, uh, use the promo code PREZ, NFL79. Uh, guys, this Colorado, New York Islanders, uh, look, I think it's a tough spot for Colorado here, even though I think they're a better team. I actually think Colorado could be the best team in hockey. Uh, they're just, you know, I, look, I'm, I'm a Colorado fan, flat out. Um, the Leafs are my number one team, and my number two team is Cledmonton. Uh, that would be a combination of Colorado and Edmonton. So Cledmonton would be my uh, second favorite team. Uh, and that's because I'm just such a massive Nate McKinnon fan. Uh, Colorado finds themselves as a road favorite at minus 135. And, you know, I got to lean, and I'm not going to bet this game, but I got to lean on the Islanders. They've lost two games in a row. Uh, they've got, they, you know, this team... Oh... Are we still taking? Yeah. Okay. Wow. I had a little note that said the, the system crashed. Well, it looks like it didn't. Uh, I got to lean on the New York Islanders here, guys. I mean, the Colorado has won two games in a row. Uh, one was against a lowly New Jersey team, but the other was an outstanding effort, and I did release that play against St. Louis. Uh, Alex, I'll go to you first, man. I'm, I'm going to get the Islanders at home as a short dog. I'm taking them. Uh, I don't know. I'm gotta, I got to go with Colorado on this one. I, you know, we talked about how they struggled a little bit getting guys back from injuries, yeah. trying to get guys to gel in, in the place. And I think we've now seen that. We saw them put up seven goals against St. Louis. I was on the Avalanche in that game as well. And then turn around and get five against New Jersey. Uh, this is a team. They are one of the best teams, if not the absolute best uh, in the NHL in my opinion. Opinion. And now they have everybody healthy, uh, everything firing on all, all cylinders. And they've actually done pretty well against the Eastern Conference. 11-2-2, two and, two, and they're 7-0-1 oh on the road so far against Eastern Conference teams. Uh, you know, the way that we were talking about the Islanders at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, this could have shaped up as possibly something of a uh, Stanley Cup final. Preview. Yeah. And that wouldn't shock me one bit, the way that these two teams are built. Uh, but Colorado's got everything clicking offensively right now. The Islanders have been kind of a bit of a flip-flop team. Lose three, then they'll win two, now they've lost two. Uh, I could see that losing streak continue at least for one more game here. Uh, Andrew, I like the over two in this game. Five and a half. I mean, Colorado is scoring uh, at will right now. And the New York Islanders are coming off of a duck, as they call it in cricket. The zero against Toronto. I think we're going to get some goals in this game. I like the Islanders. I like the over. Well, so I was just want to say, I mean, you got a five and a half with a Colorado Avalanche yeah. game uh, that has gone over in six of their last seven games. You know, that, I could just stop right there. Six of their last seven have gone over. Probably none of those totals have I've ever been five and a half. Now they play an Islanders team struggling to score, and we see a five and a half total on the road. And nine straight times the total has gone over when Colorado has been visiting New York. I mean, first of all, if you're a stats guy, you love this play. But not only just that, but Colorado... Uh, their offense is, is looking unbelievable. Uh, not just their top line, their second line, their secondary yeah. scorings there as well. Um, New York Islanders is going to be desperate. And when you're at home, you've, even more so. I think you want to score in front of your home fans. And we're not really asking for much out of them. I'm asking for maybe one or two goals, and I think Colorado gets the rest of them. So uh, as you can tell by that, I lean Colorado and New York. Um, both. You know, only thing you that lean both. This is that, yeah, only thing that worries me. No, no, I lean, I lean the over. And Colorado, but the only thing that worries me in this is that you know if if it goes over, we we need to have New York score. And right now, like I said, those past two games, we got to give credit to Toronto, but Toronto's not your best you know defensive guy or juggernaut. And then New Jersey as well, they're not really the best defensive team either. So New York Islanders have struggled to score against two pretty bad defensive teams. Uh, guys, real quick, and then I want to get into the Columbus LA Kings game. Uh, like I told everyone, I'm on a nine and two NFL run. You can have the rest of my playoffs for only seventy nine dollars. Use the promo code Prez NFL seventy nine. 
Uh, I was just texting Marco while you were talking because I needed to tell him we're going to be five more minutes. Uh, he's sitting on standby for the betting edge. Uh, guys, I mean, look, I'll go to you first, Andrew, on this game. We got a five and a half in Colorado in a Colorado game, and we got a five and a half in a Columbus game, and we got a five and a half in an LA Kings game. Uh, that seems a little odd to me. Uh, Colorado scores anytime they want, and the Columbus and the Kings couldn't score a goal if you gave them an empty net. Uh, I got to go on the under here. I mean, I. It, it, I'm going to just take what they're giving me. Under five and a half for these two teams that uh, really are playing very old school hockey, if you will. Andrew? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't really say any more than that. You're exactly right. Uh, Toll's gone under in so many games for this team. Both these teams. Five straight for Columbus. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we got to give a little bit of credit to, to the defense for both the teams. You know, their scoring sucks. It's, it's, it's not there. They can't, you know, throw a beach ball in the ocean right now. However, you know, they, they actually are, are stopping teams. They're clogging yep. up the neutral zone. They're clogging up the ice. And that's why they're getting so involved in these 3-2 games, 2-1 games. And, you know, I, I was thinking before, earlier in the year, sometimes when, you know, two crappy scoring teams get together, it could be a shit show and turn into a, a Yeah, goal that's pass, like but, more Detroit-Ottawa, where there's speed. Yeah. Not yeah, exactly. Not in this one. Right. I mean, th these teams are going to try and grind out that win. Uh, and I also do lean L.A., though, Prez, at home, first of all, uh, at around even money. Uh, I, I think L.A. gets the job done, and I think they have more scorers right now, uh, flat out. I mean, bad game against Nashville for them. Uh, the previous game before that was a great game against Philly. I think this could be a bounce-back spot here for L.A. Well, and, they, and they are zigzagging, Andrew. So, yeah, I mean, from that perspective, you're right. The, the problem I'm having, honestly, is why screw up an under bet by taking L.A.? I mean... This game is a stone-cold under. It might go over. I mean, who knows, right? It could be 2-1 with five to go in the third and a whole bunch of empty netters. Uh, but all you can do is pick right and hope you win. Uh, under for me. Alex? I would look at Columbus in this spot, actually. Uh, you know, you have to give them a ton of credit. The fact that they have gone 7-3 and three their last 10 games with all the injuries they've had, uh, you know, just significant injuries throughout their their lines on the forward blue line, but then also in net, uh, Jonas Corpusalo going out. You've had Elvis Merzlikens, a guy who was uh, winless until he had to be thrown into the starting role. And what has he done? He's gone two and one, uh, and he's kept them in all three games. Uh, you know, pardon the pun, but he's been an absolute hound dog in net right now. And I, I would be riding Elvis and, and this Columbus team right now against the LA team. That yeah, they are better at home, but that's not saying much of anything. This LA team, they like said they consistently struggle to score, uh, and the fact that both teams like to grind things out. Uh, I would look at Columbus and the under. Uh, he's Alex B. Smith, Andrew McGinnis. A uh, couple of consensuses for us. Uh, we all really like the over. Uh, in the Leaf game, the under in the Columbus game. Um, guys, it was a real pleasure doing this with you both today. Uh, tomorrow, which one of you are on? I'll be on tomorrow. Uh, you're on tomorrow with Carmine Bianco, and then Alex and Buster on Wednesday, Dave Koken and uh, Andrew and Buster on Wednesday, and Dave Koken and Alex on Thursday. So, guys, uh, thanks for watching Puck Time. It's such a pleasure doing this show. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Make sure to check out the betting edge with Marco. We're going to do an early look at the NFL playoffs. And Prez NFL 79 for my entire NFL playoff package. And Andrew 89, $30 off of seven days of all his plays. Make sure to tweet that out, Andrew. Uh, Alex, will have a promo for you tomorrow. You both are awesome. We'll speak tomorrow. Everyone, thank you so much for watching Puck Time.